While traveling through the forest, Max and Leo were suddenly attacked by demons. However, the demons couldn't even get near them as they were blocked by a powerful barrier. Meanwhile, inside a church, a cleric was trying to sell talismans to gullible villagers. It was Fred. He told the villagers that the talismans were the reason why their village was safe from the demons. But he also told them that since new species of demons were appearing, they created brand new talismans to repel these demons. And he also added that they would be selling these new talismans to the villagers for a discounted price, so the villagers flocked to the clerics in order to buy the talismans. At the same time, Max and Leo arrived at the church and noticed the fuss over the demon-resistant talismans, and they also joked about buying them for themselves since they were already there. Fred noticed their presence, and he immediately offered the talismans to them. He told Leo and Max how to use the talisman while convincing them that it was effective against the most powerful demons. But Leo replied that it was a complete scam, so Fred tried to chase them away. However, a powerful demon suddenly arrived and destroyed the barrier, and an army of weaker demons swarmed inside the barrier. Fred easily killed the weaker demons, but the other clerics and some of the villagers died at their hands. Although the talismans worked on the weakest demons, they were useless against the stronger demons. So Leo and Max had to step in to save the villagers. Because of this, Fred noticed that they were not ordinary travelers, and Leo also acknowledged Fred's capabilities, and they teamed up to face the demon army. Going back to the present, Mao and Xenia are having some tea with Max. Xenia took out a notebook while asking Max's opinion on it, but Mao seemed worried after seeing the notebook in Max's hand. Max got upset and left the room after opening the notebook. Then it was revealed that the notebook is about the series of events that led to Leo the warrior's defection. Xenia didn't understand the situation, so Mao explained that Max doesn't like sharing his feelings and that it should also be difficult for him to talk about his former friend's defection. While outside, Max was approached by a reporter, and he looked troubled when the reporter recognized him as the hero. The reporter asked Max about the incident when Xenia chased him while naked. The reporter asked about Max's and Xenia's relationship, her work, and if she is a minor. Max answered that Xenia isn't a minor, that she's an office worker, and that they are just friends. Then he also told them that he had to leave, but the reporter suddenly asked Max his opinion regarding the Gamma Republic's illegal occupation of the kingdom's northmost territory, led by his former friend Leo. Max was stopped in his tracks after hearing this, but he just took a deep breath and proceeded to walk away again. The reporter noticed Max's reaction, then she thought of following Max to find out his exact address and to catch him with Xenia. However, Max knew their intention, so he hid from them right away. He was troubled that the incident with Xenia had been recorded, but he was glad that no one recognized that she was a demon. Then he complained that he couldn't even walk outside in peace anymore. Although Max managed to escape from the reporters, Fred and his subordinates found out where he was living instead. Fred thought it was pathetic that the once mighty hero was now living in a shabby dump of an apartment. Meanwhile, Mao was scolding Max for entering the room with soggy, wet pants like a kid. But while Mao was trying to help him get changed, someone rang the doorbell, and they sensed the extremely powerful magic behind the door. Max immediately asked Mao to hide, as he thought that Mao's presence would just complicate things and cause him more trouble. Mao reluctantly followed and hid inside the closet. Max was shocked to see Fred after opening the door. Fred greeted Max, but Max wasn't happy to see him, and he immediately asked Fred for his purpose in visiting him after so many years. But Fred said that since he has some work in the area, he thought of dropping by to meet his old pal. Then Max complained about Fred's subordinates, so he told them to stay outside after entering Max's apartment. Max couldn't refuse anymore after this, and he could only say that he wasn't prepared to entertain the chief secretary of the Bureau of Magic, which is Fred. But Fred refuted that he is just an ordinary guy when he is around his friends. Fred was surprised that Max's place was neat and tidy, as he remembered that Max was a complete slob when they were younger. Then he got excited after seeing Blaze Bringer, the Holy Blade, but he complained that it shouldn't just be left on the floor like it wasn't important. However, Max refuted that he had no use for it anymore, and he also doesn't have enough space in the closet, so he couldn't hide the huge sword inside. Then he asked Fred to state his purpose for coming to him while asking how he found out about his place. But Fred ignored his question and reminisced about the past instead when he saw their party's old picture. However, he finally got serious before mentioning the Gamma Republic situation. After hearing this, Mao remembered that Gamma Republic was formed three years ago by Leo when he defected from the kingdom. Fred explained that although they are claiming to be a republic, they are actually a terrorist organization illegally occupying the kingdom's land. 
He also explained that because Leo had assembled all the traitors and criminals who defected, their military strength had grown and they were becoming a threat to the kingdom. And a war between the kingdom and the Gamma Republic is bound to happen, and they are starting their preparation by recruiting Max. Max refused, but Fred started begging for his help to stop Leo. He tried to convince Max by saying that if he joined the royal army, they could bring a swift end to the dispute with the Gamma Republic and Leo might even decide to surrender before it turned into a full-blown war, which will significantly reduce the casualties. But he refused again, saying that he wouldn't even be able to keep up with a normal soldier, much less with Leo. However, Fred refuted that it is Max's perfect chance to regain his glory, and he couldn't accept Max's current situation, thinking that he deserves a much better life. But Max still refused, saying that he had accepted his current life and that he wasn't destined for success like Fred and Leo. Fred thought that Max just had qualms about fighting a former friend. But Max refuted that he just didn't care anymore about the kingdom, the republic, or even the people, before asking Fred to leave. Fred finally accepted Max's decision. However, before leaving, he brought out the incident when Xenia was chasing Max while naked around the town. He was teasing him at first, but he warned him that it would be his biggest scandal thus far if news of him sleeping with a demon was discovered by the public, and Mao realized Max's dangerous situation because of this. Then Fred threatened Max that he would need to decide whether to return to his hero life or become a wanted man after being labeled a traitor like Leo. However, Max didn't fall for his threats. He asked Fred to provide proof that he was really involved with the demons. Because of this, Fred started walking in the closet's direction, fully aware of the evil aura emanating from the inside. He also added that the aura inside the closet is even more sinister than Xenia's aura that he saw through the video. Seeing Max's tensed expression, Fred told Max that he would just take a quick peek, and Max could only helplessly agree. However, after opening the closet, Fred saw a ghost, not a demon. Fred quietly closed the closet, so Max asked him what was wrong with a surprised expression. Fred had a scared expression while asking Max if he had noticed anything strange while living in the apartment. However, he's even more scared after seeing the ghost beside Max. Max couldn't understand what was going on, so he asked Fred if something was wrong when he noticed that Fred was as pale as a ghost. But Fred told him that he had to go while asking him to stay back, and he ran away and left when the ghost started approaching him. Max sighed in relief before asking Mao if he had done something to scare Fred away. However, Mao didn't know what happened, as he was just hiding in the futons, not doing anything. Although he thought that they didn't get caught due to his skills and deception. Mao wanted to ask Max about his friend's situation, but Max told him that they had their own lives and it was something he couldn't help them with. Mao didn't ask anything anymore, and he apologized that Max was in a difficult situation because of him. Max agreed, and he also added that he might really have to leave the kingdom if the public discovered that he has connections with demons. However, after hearing this, Mao immediately told him that he could live in his castle instead. Max was surprised, but he thought that he would really become the betrayer of humanity if that happened. At the same time, Fred looks out of sorts after leaving the apartment, so his subordinate asks if he was attacked by Max. He said he was fine, but his subordinates had to carry him on their way to his meeting. Although he failed to convince Max and swore to never return to his apartment again, he hasn't given up on getting Max on his side yet, as he thought that it would be better for him as well. Then the scene changed to the past, showing Fred's first battle with Leo and Max to repel the demon army. Although Fred was scamming the villagers with his talisman, Max recognized his skills as he managed to set up a huge barrier to protect the village, and he also asked Fred to join their party. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe and look forward to the next part.